Hey everyone, Blitzball Champ is back here with a brand new video here on the U to the Two. So, I decided to take some time in this video to uh, just kind of go over pretty much the overall grades and rankings for the Carolina Panthers so far this season. Right now, uh, week 13, and they're on a bye. So they're on a bye. And their current record this season is 4-8. and eight. Um, I just wanted to really take time to go over some, some numbers, some rankings, and really just kind of give my thoughts on what's been working out, what hasn't been working out, um, gonna look at the offense, gonna look at the defense, and uh, and go from there. So, I, I took some time to, I got a, got a little note card here. I took some time to write down some numbers uh, for rankings that I got. Uh, and this represents pretty much the Carolina Panthers' rankings in many different areas so far up to this point. They don't have a game this week. They're on a bye, so it's up to this point. So I'm going to start with the offense. So check this out. So our overall offense, the Carolina Panthers offense, is ranked 16. Of course, there's 32 teams in the NFL. They're ranked 16th. Um, they're ranked 7th. In passing yards, they're ranked six in passing completions. They're ranked 25th in passing touchdowns. They're ranked, let's we'll see, they're ranked 14th in rush yards. I think I read that right. Yeah, 14th, yes. They're ranked ninth. In rushing touchdowns. Total touchdowns, they're ranked 19th. Red zone touchdown percentage, 25th. Oh, and I wanted to mention um, so passion pass passing completes completions rank six, attempts ranked eleventh. For rushing, uh, rushing yards, uh, Ranked 14th, um, rushing attempts 13th. Third down uh, percentage, 19th. Uh, interceptions, 20th. And sacks allowed, 14th. What really stands out to me. are passing touchdowns and red zone touchdown percentage. Or, or if you ask me the top three things that stand out to me, that's a big, big issue. Passing touchdowns, red zone touchdown percentage, and third down. Third down is ranked 19th, so not as bad as the other two that I mentioned, but it's still, still pretty bad. It's, it's past that, it's pretty much about past that halfway point. Um, it's been an issue throughout the season, third down completion percentage. Um, of course, fourth down is, you know, better, but the fact that we've had to go for it quite a bit on fourth down isn't always a good thing. But it's definitely been noticeable with how some of the play calling and execution has gone that, you know, them being ranked 19th and third down completion. I mean, that's, that's not as bad as I was originally thinking. I was probably thinking it was maybe past 25 or 28, if you ask me. But they say 19th. 
but it's definitely something that needs to be worked on. But passing touchdowns, they're ranked 25th. Let's, let's, let's take a look. So, Teddy Bridgewater so far has 14 touchdowns. Passing touchdowns, that is. And of course, um, there's been 15 total receiving touchdowns. 14 were thrown by Teddy Bridgewater. One of them was thrown by P.J. Walker. Out of all the games that, out of all the wins, you know, Teddy Bridgewater was the quarterback for three of the wins, P.J. Walker for one of them. Now, let's, let's look at these, at these 15, these 15 touchdowns, 15 receiving touchdowns. One to Colin Thompson, one to Reggie Bonifon, one to... Christian McCaffrey, one to Ian Thomas, two to Mike Davis, three to Curtis Samuel, two to Robbie Anderson, four to DJ Moore. That's abysmal. Now, not to take away the fact that players like DJ Moore and Robbie Anderson are both, both, on their way to a thousand yards receiving, and they will definitely get past, get to a thousand yards receiving. I know DJ Moore got hurt; X rays were negative. I'm pretty sure he'll be back before the end of the season to play a little bit more. So I have no doubt both these players will get over a thousand yards receiving. But DJ Moore only has four touchdowns, and Robbie Anderson two. Now, we got a new offensive of coordinator in Joe Brady. But let's also keep in mind that Joe Brady was with the LSU Tigers and won the um, Boyles Award as top assistant coach of that year. Played with an offense that pretty much had the number one offense. And he was the receivers, wide receivers, and um, what was it? Passing assistant coach? A passing game coordinator and wide receivers coach for LSU. But has also been an off offensive assistant for the Saints. This was that year in college, uh, uh, what was it, 2019? He was, he was the guy. He was the guy. All of that, and yet, your best, your top number one receiver, or heck, I'd say, you know, top three, because Curtis Samuel, Robbie Anderson, DJ Moore have done a great job. DJ Moore only has four touchdowns. Robbie Anderson, two. Two. Curtis Samuel, three. You have two of your receivers about to hit a thousand yards receiving. And they only have six touchdowns between each other? This doesn't seem like the Joe Brady I think Panther fans were expecting. Especially with this man being the offensive coordinator running the offense. I understand that is not college but this really is no excuse with the weapons that are on this offense for this to be such a struggle 
red zone touchdown percentage, ranked 25. We can rack up all those yards and march down the field, but we struggle to punch it in the end zone while we're in the red zone. That's not good. With the kind of weapons that we have, even without Christian McCaffrey, there's really no excuse. There's no excuse. There's, there's no excuse. There have been some times where Joe Brady has been very aggressive with the play calling. And then so many other times, it's just, eh. But, I mean, how would you feel... And I'm not trying to compare these these players to, to these players. But how would you feel if you had a trio in their prime of Jerry Rice, Terrell Owens, or shoot, uh, Odell Beckham Jr., or, you know, Michael Irvin, whatever. And you're in weak 13, and not a single one of them even has five receiving touchdowns. Does, does that sound normal to y'all? I'm just saying, I'm just saying, for, for somebody to have been given such accolades and such praise, And I know, and I understand people are going to say, well, this is first year, this is first year. I get that. But this is the pros. This is the pros. If you're good enough to get picked up and go, go into the pros, you got to be held accountable. Got to be held accountable. Not only that, I feel like I've given him and Teddy Bridgewater, which I'll get to him in a second, Plenty of passes this season. But at this point, no more. No more. With the kind of weapons and talent that's on this offense, there is no reason why we should be 25th in passing touchdowns and 25th in red zone touchdown percentage when we're ranked 7th and ranked 6th in passing yards and passing completions. There is no reason why those other two stats rankings should be at 25. There's no excuse. It, it's, it's all there. It's... I'm not making this up. You know, like I said, third down ranking 19. I mean, it's eh. it's not the worst of the worst. It's not as bad as I thought it was, but it's still it's still kind of it's past the halfway point at least. So, I mean, I'm just saying, like, with the kind of talent that's on this offense, and the, and the, sad, the sad thing about it, Christian McCaffrey has more touchdowns than both. The um, the running backs and the receivers. Chris McCaffrey has uh six touchdowns, five rushing, one receiving. So McCaffrey has more touchdowns than each of the receivers and each of the running backs. And he's missed many of this season's games. 
and he still has more touchdowns this season. That says something. <sighs> on paper, the talent on this offense, I feel is good. But it's a combination of execution and just in coaching. You, you can't say, you really can't say talent is an issue. The weapons are there. Let's talk about Teddy Bridgewater. I will say this about Teddy Bridgewater. He's done well at avoiding turnovers. I mean, he's he's through eight picks. Still has a rating of 96.3, a completion percentage of 70.2. Um, 257 of 366, 2,819 yards, 14 touchdowns. He's been sacked a good bit. Sacked nine. 19 times but I will say that completion percentage wise and turn just overall turnovers he's managed pretty well at the same time some of his throws have been inaccurate and not a lot of shots taken downfield You know, a lot of passes have been thrown, you know, especially those that are thrown deep. The receivers have had to, you know, make the difficult or acrobatic catch. It's not always good. I mean, it's great that they can do that. I'm not downplaying their talent, but still can be tough when you have to deal with that so much on so many attempts. Pardon me. Um, a lot of people are really, really rooting for P.J. Walker to be the guy after the game against Detroit, the shutout game. Now, I give him his props. In that game, he was, um, he was accurate, threw some good balls. Um, he did get sat twice. Actually, I think it was, um, yeah, yeah, it was twice. But he did also throw two end zone interceptions. I mean, not only that, I mean, two interceptions is common, but two in the end zone? I, I don't think I've ever seen that before. And I've watched a lot of football. So. I just feel like it's way too early. To say that PJ Walker is the guy. I believe that we should get more of a look at him. For sure. For sure. But to say that he's the guy. Uh, no. It's too early. He's played one full game. Too early. He's thrown a touchdown and two picks. But like I said, he's got some accurate throws, and he can throw deep. He can scramble. He, he's athletic. But there's a reason why he's not the starter. At least not yet. There's a reason. And I just don't believe he's ready to be starter material in the long run. I don't believe it yet. I'm not going to make the same mistake that I did with Kyle Allen. I'm not, I'm not going to make that mistake. Fell for it the first time. No, I'm not doing it again. 
Still much more to see. But I do hope PJ Walker does get more, do get more opportunities. But <clears throat> I mean, for overall, this uh, offense being ranked 16. I mean, you would think it'd be worse, but. And, and rushing yards, I mean, overall, Mike Davis has done pretty well. I just feel like he needs to get more opportunities. I mean, he's had three rushing touchdowns. But, I mean, he's done well filling in for Christian McCaffrey. I give him that. I definitely give him that. Um, <clears throat> you know, even Curtis Samuel's got a little bit of running in. But... I just feel like, you know, we shy away from from really s establishing a strong run game. I mean, we did that so much when we had Christian McCaffrey, and I just feel like we need to do that even with Mike Davis and the others. Like, still got to have a good, strong balance in the run and passing game. But, but overall, you know, we're, we're ranked ninth in rushing touchdowns, so I mean, it's something to keep in mind, but just passing-wise, we just, Carolina does well in overall passing yards and completions, but touchdowns and just red zone touchdown percentage is just, it's terrible. So... Hopefully those things get fixed. Um, if I were to pick t uh, my top five players on the offense, uh, in no particular order, I mean, to be honest, it would be the Mike Davis, Curtis Samuel, DJ Moore, Robbie Anderson, and some people will disagree, but Eddie Bridgewater. Those are my five. Those are my five. Because at the end of the day, you know, of three of those wins, Teddy Bridgewater was the starter. So, you know, I got to I gotta keep it real. I got to keep it real. So those, those are who my top five on the offense would be Bridgewater, Mike Davis, Robbie Anderson, DJ Moore, Curtis Samuel. Okay, let's take a look at the defensive side of things. Mm. Whew. Carolina defense is ranked 24th in the league. They're ranked 25 in sacks, not surprised. Ranked 29th in interceptions, not surprised. Total yards allowed, 29. Passing completion percentage, ranked 30. Passing touchdowns allowed. 16th passing yards allowed 27th rushing yards allowed 22 rushing touchdowns allowed 23rd overall total touchdowns ranked 21 red zone touchdown uh percentage twenty four. So that's yeah. They struggle in the red zone as well. First and third down efficiency rank thirty first. 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> there's really not a lot of positive to say about this about this defense. There, there really isn't. This defense, and it's sad too because Carolina drafted all defense. But let's look at some some personnel stats. Total sacks, eighteen. I'm I'm kind of surprised we even have eighteen sacks. But of course, big percentage of those sacks. Of course, the leading sack leader is Brian Burns with six. Uh, interceptions only have five, and three of them were Dante Jackson. Um, <clears throat> Jeremy Chen leads in total tackles with, with 87, and also tied for... Uh, um, first foot um, solo tackles, total so solo tackles, is Jeremy Chen and Shaq Thompson. Um, if anything, the main thing that uh, the defense has done well is uh, force fumbles with 10. And uh, fumble recoveries with 12, with two of those being... Um, being touchdowns, both by Jeremy Chen. But, uh, yeah, there's not really a lot of positive to say about the Carolina defense. I mean, on first and third down, both. Rank 31 in, in efficiency. So nine times out of ten, the opposing team will get a first down or whatever on a first down play or a third down play. Not good. Not good. That pretty much means about any team can march down the field against this Carolina defense. Can't really get any interceptions. So out of position. You know, interceptions are rare for this team. And even and even in a sort of way, sacks are rare for this team. I mean, they're ranked 25th in sacks. You know, just... The defense and... Even the offense as well, the whole team is very undisciplined. Very undisciplined. And I think a big part of that is a combination of coaching. Because I'm sorry, Phil Snow, I, I, I believe strongly, he's, he's got to go. He's got to go. I, mm -mm. I don't think he's the guy. I really don't. And secondly, this team not really having a proven leader. This defense doesn't really have a true leader. I think Shaq is trying to become one, but he's not there. And maybe even Brian Burns might be on the rise to be, be the leader on defense, but he's not there. He's, you know, and he's great, great, great player. But... This team, after Luke Keekley retired, this team's defense lost their identity. The leadership is gone. The identity is gone. There have been some sparks here and there, but just very undisciplined and no leadership and no identity. You know, I give them props. On a spectacular game against the Lions, I mean, it was a shutout. I give them props on that because I don't care what team it's against. A shutout is not easy. It doesn't matter how strong or weak the opposing team is. A shutout is not easy to accomplish. Now, 
Now, if I could give <clears throat> my top five defensive players, hmm. I would have to say Jeremy Chen, Brian Burns, Rasul Douglas, gotta say Dante Jackson, because I mean he's the main one that's gotten interceptions, and it's probably It's probably a mix between Justin Burris and Sam Franklin, but I mean, Shaq Thompson, uh, I mean, I just, I, it's hard for me to put him in, in, in my, in my top five defensive players. It's, it's hard. It's really hard. Cause I mean, other than, you know, say a, some motivational words and cuss out the team and whatnot, I just don't think he's really made any more of an impact. Although he's gotten, you know, some, some tackles for loss, but I just, yeah, if you ask me, Jeremy Chin, Brian Burns, Russell Douglas, Justin Burrs, Sam Franklin, Dante Jackson. I mean, you know, those stand out the most to me, to be honest with you. But just, you know, it's even hard to pick out of that bunch because the defense is just terrible. Overall, it's terrible. So... Me. If anything, you definitely got a bright star in Jeremy Chin. I think Jeremy Chin is definitely going to be a pivotal part of this defense in the future. So we got something great out of him. Um. Brian Burns, Brian Burns is definitely improving and he's definitely showing that he can be a threat, a consistent threat, and he's going to grow into something. Derek Brown, I'm just not convinced yet because I don't think the dude even has a sack yet and he doesn't. He doesn't have a single sack yet. He does have six tackles for loss. But I just really, up to this point, I would have thought he would have gotten at least a few sacks up to this point. So, I mean, I'm not ready to write Derek Brown off yet, but I can't say that he's impressed. But I'm not ready to write him off yet. I'm not. But, um... If anything, the worst of the worst of the worst of the worst, to hear Whitehead. He's just, he's just flat out, nah, he's just flat out bad. That was a bad pickup. Probably, probably the worst pickup on defense was to hear Whitehead. But, um... You know, I think I think eventually YGM is going to be something special. Um, Bravion Roy. You know, I think those two are going to be special. Um, maybe, maybe Stanley Thomas Oliver the Third. We'll we'll see, but but yeah. But if anything, I mean, I'm disappointed greatly in the defense, but I'm even more kind of shocked slash, slash disappointed in the offense because, I mean, 
we still have strong weapons on the offense. And, you know, with the offense ranked the way it is and how Joe Brady has done, is there's really no excuse for it. And I've given enough passes throughout the season. Can't keep giving passes. Can't keep ignoring things. Can't keep just accepting mediocrity. I mean, the team... You have to remember, the team hasn't been, been to the playoffs since 2017. You know? And not only that, the team started going down from 11 and 5 to 7 and 9 to 5 and 11. Right now we're 4 and 8, but hey, there's no guarantee that we'll do better than 5, five and 11. I mean. <laughs> I'm being, I'm just, I'm just keeping it real. I mean, after all, we lost, what? One, two, three, four, five games in a row. And it's like I've said so many times. As a matter of fact, let's look at those, let's look at the games that we've lost. And the games that we've won right quick so far. So for wins, beat the Chargers, beat the Cardinals, beat the Falcons, and we've beaten the Lions. So we've gotten two wins at home and two wins on the road. Um, you know, out of the four of these teams, I mean, real realistically, uh. The Cardinals are really the, own, the the main threat that we've beaten so far. I mean, the Chargers in, not so much. The Lions, not so much. The Falcons, not so much. But Cardinals is probably, you know, the main pivotal win. But, you know, of course, the second one would be Detroit. Because, I mean, a little bit of a weaker team, but it was a shutout. And like I said, shutouts should never be ignored. Doesn't matter what team it is, shutouts are difficult to get. But, and of course, even the Falcons win was a statement because, you know, Carolina hasn't beaten Atlanta in Atlanta in a very long time. So, I mean, the wins were statement wins. I'll, I'll, I will say that. They're, they will. They were statement wins. Now for the losses, Raiders, close game, definitely winnable, definitely came out firing, but just bad play call at the end. Buccaneers. Eh, wasn't pretty at all. Lost by a pretty decent margin. The Bears. Bears was a pretty sloppy game. I mean, Bears was very, very sloppy. Saints was close. Was really, really close. And honestly, one that I strongly felt like we should have had. We, sh we sh really should have had that game. Especially DJ Moore blowing up the way he did. We really should have had that game. Falcons on the second meeting. I mean... Defense was just... Ugh. And we shied away from really using DJ Moore. And honestly, we really should have won that Falcons game. Chiefs, we really weren't expected to even be close to, to winning against that team. But Teddy Bridgewater played a heck of a game. I mean, in the Saints game and in this game, he played, played a great game. I think with that, it mainly came down to, to defense. Just, you know, Patrick Mahomes had very, very few, I think he only had one or two interceptions up to that game and completed four, four touchdowns. So, I mean, it was tough and just so many laps in the, lapses in the defense, but 
the fact I was proud in the fact that it was, you know, as close as it was. I mean, they lost by two points. And then we got trounced by the Buccaneers. And that was just so much was going wrong with, with that one. And Tom Brady looked like a superstar. And Ronald Jones, the second, definitely looked like a superstar. But they just fell apart. And I've said this so many times in the previous video. I'll say it again in this video. They had no business losing that Vikings game. With how the play was, there's no reason why they should have lost that game. Especially when you're up 21 to 10, you get two back to back, two back to back fumble recovery touchdowns. And even get another takeaway near the end, a freebie. And still not enough to punch it into the end zone. There's no excuse for it. I mean, rebuilding is one thing, but that has nothing to do with execution. You still have to execute. You can have as many superstars on the team as possible, but if you don't execute and carry out the game plan and, and run the plays, get the completions, get into the end zone, get the stops, execution is a big deal. It's a big deal you know we can't just always look at it as rebuilding rebuilding I mean if you think about it I mean it's kind of been that way for for quite a bit with the unfortunate you know injuries in the past to Cam Newton I mean, we've kind of had to make some different moves make a lot of adjustments so I mean, that's normal. It's unfortunate because you don't want to see anybody leave or get injured, and lose their spot, but that's going to happen sometimes. But that doesn't take away from execution. That's still pivotal. So, I mean... And then a lot of folks were saying, you know, we had no chance at playoffs, no chance at playoffs. So yes, we did. Because one, the, the Cardinals lost, and all Carolina had to do was win that game, and they would still continue to be in the hunt. So the opportunity was there. You know, you have a chance to make the playoffs or to keep your playoff hopes alive. You got to execute. You got to execute. So coming off the bye, got the Broncos. So we pretty much got four games left. Two home and two away. Game against the Broncos. Then on the road against the Packers and the Washington team. And then finishing off back at home against the Saints. I mean, honestly, Broncos is very winnable. Washington's very winnable. Packers and Saints will be tough. But we'll see what happens. But um, that's all that I have. Let me know what y'all think. Um, how would y'all review and rate how the Carolina Panthers have done this season. Offense, defense, you know, the games they've lost, the games they've won. What talent stands out the most to you on offense, defense, overall? Um, what do y'all think of the coaching staff? Yay, nay. Bridgewater, DJ Walker, you know, what do you do? You know, would you like to see more Christian McCaffrey make a comeback for the end of the season? Let me know what y'all's thoughts are. Like, comment, subscribe. Click that notification bell so you don't miss a video. Thank you so much for watching. This is Blitzball Champ Jason Ingram signing off. I'll catch y'all later.